morning, everyone. My name is Steve Resitek. I work at Technique FMC. We build meters for the petroleum industry. We measure the meters that we build measures the petroleum as it comes out of the ground or through the line, and it determines how many gallons or deciliters per minute or per hour, whatever the specifications are. I came to this job about 13 years ago. Actually, started in the machine shop area. There was an ad in the paper, a coworker shared it with me at the time. I applied, I got a call for an interview, and came to work here. I worked down in the machine shop about 10 years and been up here to the assembly area now. I've been in the assembly area probably about three and a half years now. So this is where I'm working at the present time. Um, I've had a good amount of educational background, high school, trade school, most of my trade school stuff uh, related to machining and that came into play also as I'm doing assembly work because there's many moving parts in a meter and there's many times that parts don't fit, parts don't work, meters don't work as they're supposed to and that machining background has been invaluable in helping to resolve issues that we're here when I came and issues that come along as they, as they come up. And then when you have moving parts, you have a lot of possibilities of different things going wrong. And that background has helped a lot. If you consider going into assembly, I would encourage anyone to get as much math experience they can, uh, computer experience also. We work on the computers. This particular job also involves a lot of paperwork and we have to document our dimensions as we put the meters together for the customer. The customer gets a copy of these documents. We have a copy here on our computer system. Should something go wrong, they know where they might have to look at or they can send it back to us and we can repair them. We have a repair shop in the back. We call it Revolve. So, that's my story in a nutshell, how I came to come to Technique FMC. Okay, as I had said earlier, we use a computer for getting our jobs. Management puts our jobs in what we call a queue. This is my particular queue. If I wanna know what I'm gonna work on, or what I have in my queue, I click on it, it takes a minute to load, sometimes a little longer. <laughs> now I have three different jobs in here at the present time. The one that I would be working on would be the one highlighted in blue right now. It's streamlined operations and they have a, an easier way of tracking things. So that's the computer end or part of the computer end that we get into here at Technique FMC. Start on jobs, we have personal equipment personal protective equipment that we're required to use here. Safety glasses are required in the shop upon entry. You don't get into this facility without safety glasses. That's mandatory. Also, when you're exposed to a high amount of noise, earmuffs are very helpful. So I wear muffs as needed. Also, you get into tight places where you can't see well, a flashlight's real helpful pocket home flashlight which doesn't seem like a lot but it is when you need one. If we're in an area where there's a high amount of dust where you're grinding, you use a face shield to go along with the safety glasses because that's important, very important. As far as that measuring instruments go, we don't get into a lot of technical measurements here. I always carry a six inch scale because that comes in very handy. Markers, pens, pencils, well, magnet comes in handy for picking up parts you drop down inside a meter, and it does happen. But that's part of what we have for personal protective equipment here today. Okay, I'm overlooking an SC13 meter that's presently built. Basically, this is what we call a single case meter. It only has one casing on the outside. I won't get into double casing today, that's a little more complex. But it has three basic components. It has a rotor that we build here. It also has a body, which I'll show here. The 
the rotor will fit down into the body. And we have a top cover that is shown here. All those components are put together, and as a result of that, well, when I'm finished with it, it will have to go into what we call our test house here. What happens is they put it in a line that simulates what will be out in the field for a prospective customer, and they test that at a certain temperature, at a certain speed, certain amount of pressure on the line itself, and all their information goes into the computer, and then they can determine whether this will meet the specs that the customer is asking for. This represents a block that's going to go into the body of an SC13. This will go down inside. I have two bolts that will hold it together. Line up the bolts the hole in the, in the block itself, get it started, have an air impact gun that will run in the bolts real fast, not too tight. This impact gun has different adjustments for a different amount of torque. Here's your adjustment for your torque. That's low, that's high. Since this is a small meter, I put it on low. We don't want to rip the threads apart in the process of putting this together. So I'll put this together. The block is now in the body. The second item I'm gonna put in will be the rotor. Rotor picks up like so. I'm going to drop this rotor into the body itself. Now it's got to drop on a pin. It's on there. Put this rotor into the body itself. Now it's got to drop on a pin. It's on there. We have meters that run from a C2, a two inch meter, on up to an M16, which would stand probably about four and a half feet tall. But we have meters that can run at a cost of hundreds of dollars on up to thousands of dollars and close to a million dollars in some of these meters themselves. They can be extremely expensive depending on the application of what we're trying to do. Third and final component that goes on here it's a cover. Now that has to line up, and it does. Not here. I'll put that on top. I'm not going to tighten it all the way to specs because there's a lot more work involved, but I'm just going to give you a and understanding what we're doing. Now we're going to put a calibrator gear on this shaft here. There are two other gears shown here also. One's a jack shaft, what we call a jack shaft gear, and the other one's what we call an idler gear. Those items go together. Then this is our calibrator, which they use in the fuel for, as you can understand, calibrating the meter itself. This slides in, slides in position. Now I want to make sure this thing spins free. So what I do is I take an air hose, I cut a hole in what we call a flange protector, and I'm going to shoot some air through You can see the meter's turning as it's supposed to. One of the things that we do within the factory in the process of building these meters is these flange protectors are very important. They protect a portion of the meter that is exposed out in the field and in the shop during the manufacturing process. We don't want any kind of damage done to that area. So we put these plastic flange protectors on there to keep that from happening. Because this is where this will fit in a line in a field wherever it's being used, and that has to be in good condition. No 
there'll be a gasket that will go in there and that'll all go together. And that basically gives you a rough idea how to build an SC-13B.